What is going on, all you Pokemon collecting maniacs out there? This is Ryan, the Pika Pika Papa, and God, I love bringing you guys this video. So, we just got done with our grading report video, which tells us about all the grading activity from last month, and now we're going to look at the top 10 cards that exchanged hands the most on TCG Player. Now, when we're talking about looking at the market from a holistic view, when we're trying to get an idea of what might be happening, how to play chess when everybody else is playing checkers, these are the types of videos that I absolutely love to bring to this amazing community. So, not only are we going to look at the cardboard and see where they rank and see their individual price changes, but we're also going to look at a couple other things as well. So I've got these yellow stars which indicate how many months a card has been on this list. Then I also want to make sure I show you guys, hey listen, if it comes from a booster box or an elite trainer box, I want to make sure that we have that graph as well. So we have a couple different graphs on here and an indication of velocity. So super exciting stuff and I absolutely love bringing this to you. So. We do fun stuff like this all the time. If this gets you as excited as it gets me, hey, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a member of this amazing community. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, drop them down below. I am always responding to them, and I love interacting with you guys. You guys are so smart. Like You guys are what makes this channel happen. So without further ado, let's get into the top 10. So now listen, last month, it was absolute insanity in the top 10 list because we had Scarlet and Violet dropped. All kinds of cards were exchanging hands and all of these beautiful pieces of cardboard that had been on this list that had all those yellow stars that I just talked about dropped off the list. Now, if you're new to this channel, normally I start off with showing you all the cards that drop off the list. This is the clip from last month's slide, but guess what? Order has been restored. The Scarlet and Violet cards have flushed through the market. We've got a bunch of big hitters on this list, so I'm really excited to see some of these awesome pieces of cardboard back on the list. All right, so let's get into number 10. Speaking of Scarlet and Violet, listen, it should not be totally gone because there's some awesome cardboard in that base set. This Gardevoir EX right here, excited to see that it still stayed in the top 10. Two stars, back-to-back -back months. Now we look at the booster box price. Hey, we all know the booster boxes have not been performing great. You can get them for about 107, 108 bucks on eBay right now. I don't think anybody needs to rush out and buy them at that point. I think these are going to be readily available for a long, long, long time at that price, maybe even less. So, hey, I don't have any yet, but I will be picking some up, but not anytime soon. And again, this is just an awesome piece of cardboard here, right? We saw what happened, what always happens. It started off pre-sale at $120, then it just fell off a cliff. I will say this, compared to Scarlet, or compared to Crown Zenith and some of the other new releases, these Scarlet and Violet base set cards have dropped off at a much steeper rate than the other ones that we've seen. They just really cratered right off the bat, and I think that's because there was some, some pent-up excitement for this, and then the cardboard, for whatever reason, just didn't hit home. And so, hey, it didn't happen the way we thought it did, but we've done a ton of research on this channel. We did a video on why we weren't buying Scarlet and Violet base set out of the gate, right? Like we were prepared for this. So nice to see this card on the list. And if you want to pick it up, I still think it's got some room to drop. So anyways, really cool cardboard. Now, number nine right here, this card has been on the list every single month that we have been doing this. So no matter what happened, no matter Crown Zenith came out, it didn't matter. Scarlet and Violet base set came out and decimated this list. It didn't matter. This Lugia V from Silver Tempest has been on the list every single time. Now, the price has finally started to flatten out. That was something we called out last month when we were looking at this. We're finally starting to see a tail that comes down. But look at the way Silver or Silver Tempest booster boxes have been performing. They have been up and to the right. This big chase card has been down. It is finally starting to level out. Something that's really interesting that I'm gonna keep an eye on is this Silver Tempest booster box price. Now, we have seen Brilliant Stars got up to 180 bucks a booster box, and guess what? We saw a little reprint. Lost Origins got up to $180 a booster box, and now we're seeing some more coming into the market. I don't know what that's going to look like, but it is interesting to start charting these trends. One of the videos that I'm going to do here in the next couple weeks, I'm going to be looking at Brilliant Stars and how Brilliant Stars sealed product and individual cards reacted to that reprint because, hey, if we can get some ideas to what might happen with Lost Origin, I'm all over that. But different video for a different day. This Lugia card, hey, it might be that time to jump in. We shall see. Certainly has been flattening out. Awesome piece of cardboard. Tons of interest. So it's always good when you have a card where a lot of people are exchanging hands with it. So next one right here. <laughs> I love this card so much. I'm not going to lie to you. I, as steeled of a collector and investor as I am for as long as I've been doing this, when this was on eBay for $100 pre-release for Crown Zenith, I almost pulled the trigger. I didn't, 
but I was like, it's such a beautiful card. It's the only secret rare. Like, maybe this is the card that will buck the trend, but then that little voice inside my head said, no, just hold off, you'll be fine. And here it is, down from a hundred and something dollars pre-sale uh, all the way to 15. Now, I have been saying for the last couple months that I'm gonna pull the trigger on this. I'm gonna pull the trigger on this. Listen, now is the time. You never know where the bottom is. It might continue to drop farther, but the thing I like about it is it's been out for six months now. It's been flat for the last two. I love the cardboard. It's the freaking Pika Pika Papa channel, right? So I got to have this Pikachu in the collection. I think now is the time to go ahead and buy in. I also think it's really interesting that these Crown Zenith ETBs are still at $55. Like, I think I bought my case for $30 each, up to $55 now. You know, it's got a little bit higher, but it's starting to flatten out as well. I do think Crown Zenith, I know there's a lot of product in the market right now. It'll be really interesting to see the velocity and the volume of that as we get six, eight, 12 months down the road from now. Like, I don't know, since it's got those yellow borders, I don't know if they have warehouses full of it. I don't know if there's gonna be restocks or reprints. I knew the Pokemon Center exclusive ETB has been sold out for I don't know, a couple months now. So I don't know if that's coming back in stock, but I am a big believer overall in Crown Zenith. I th think it's gonna be a great set and I think this is gonna be one of the awesomest cards in that set. All right, coming in at number seven is the Giratina from Lost Origin. Another card we talk about at nauseum on this channel. I absolutely love this. I love the way the colors, the light and the dark. I love, I just love everything about it. But the thing that I have said time and time again is, $300 for an ultra modern card. It's just too much for me right now. I think there's plenty of time to wait, see where this lays out. Like, and now we have this reprint coming out or restock or whatever it is. And you can already start to see the effects of it in the booster box price on the left-hand side. I hope this card doesn't get decimated, but the reality is if there's gonna be more product out there, obviously there's gonna be more opening. There's gonna be more of these Giratina Vs in the market, uh, which is gonna put some downward pressure on the price. Now, if there's enough demand for it, if enough people are out there in love with the card who wanna buy it, then hey, it can absolutely weather this storm. This is the card which spun up my idea to do the Brilliant Stars comparison here in a couple weeks. Either way, you guys know I love this piece of cardboard. I think down the road this is going to do really, really well. But man, it is a lot of money to spend on an ultra modern card, even though we all think Lost Origins is going to be a freaking epic set for years to come. All right. Speaking of Crown Zenith, speaking of cards I love out of Crown Zenith, this is another one that I have said I am just chomping at the bit to add to the collection. I think this is the time to get in. This Mewtwo V-Star, I know there's some awesome gold cards in Crown Zenith, but I do think this is gonna end up, obviously, probably not number one, maybe number two or number three long-term. I just love it. It's got the Zard on there. They're doing battle. I love everything about this card. I think it's an absolute steal at $60. If Crown Zenith does what I think it could do, then I think this card has got nothing but upside. Again, six months in, starting to flatten out. I never know where the bottom's gonna be. You miss out on a lot of investment opportunities if you're sitting on the sidelines waiting for the bottom. I think this is a beautiful card at a fair price. Really excited to see this back in the top 10 at number six. I am all over this card this month. Coming in at number five, Hey, back to back for Forest Seal Stone. Good for you. Way to come out of obscurity and come back into here. I know this card was banned at one point and now obviously it's not banned anymore. You can see in the, the single price chart where it dropped all the way down and then it popped right back up. So good for you, Forest Seal Stone. Way to jump back into here and become relevant again. I've been pulling for you. And again, Silver Tempest booster box price. This is just exciting to see a totally different type of card on the list two months in a row coming in at number five. Good for you. All right, now we get into this. Number four is the Charizard from base set. Before you guys blow me up in the comments, I know this is a picture of the first edition one, but guess what? All I do is copy and paste this into the slide and it happens to be a first edition Zard. Please don't blow me up. Anyways, the thing that I'm most excited about is this Charizard base set, which to me, when we were talking about building index funds, when we're talking about, hey, how's the overall health of the hobby doing? When I see this getting near a one year high, it is exciting for me, right? When people are looking at this card, when there's interest in it, when people are buying it, when they're paying more now for it than they were a year ago. Everybody was worried about the pandemic, right? There was this pandemic hype. Everything crashed. Will it ever come back again? I heard some crazy people people saying, you'll never see these all-time highs again. This is nowhere near an all-time high, but it is up to a one-year high. It is fighting, it is clawing, it is scratching back. I love seeing this at number four. I love seeing it get a, near a one-year high. I think this is a great indication of overall hobby health, and uh, it's not in my collection, but one of these cards. Actually, I'm going for a PSA 8 Shadowless uh, Charizard Hollow, so that's the one I got my eyes on. It's further down the road dream for me, but anyways, super excited to see this one on the set. 
Next one, speaking of Giratina, number three, listen, lots of grading activity for Giratina, right? If you watch the grading report video that we just did, Giratina is starting to climb up that list. Like we talk about the way Rayquaza cards have been performing because he's been climbing up the list. Like when we see, this is when I say these videos all tie into each other. This is why I say, hey, I would love for you to become a subscriber. Yes, I love seeing the subscriber count grow, but I also like all of us to be playing chess when everybody else is playing checkers. And these videos really do uh, tie into each other. So really exciting to see the grading ball uh, uh, grading velocity of uh, Giratina cranking up over the last couple months. And this card, again, it has been coming down, which it should have. It started off at 180 down to 103 bucks right now, but it is definitely flattening out and it is definitely looking sharp. Again, I think this might end up being the number one card in all of Crown Zenith. And if it does, I'm telling you right now, it has got nothing but upside in the years ahead. All right, coming in at number two, <laughs> the Miriam. I love this card. I love everything about this card. She's just remarkably human. She's tripping. The books are flying. You got Pikachu hanging out in the background. Just unfortunately, look at that. It started all the way up at $250. Now it's down to $52. Completely overhyped. I think people were under the impression that this card was going to do what the Japanese version did, which we all know that doesn't make any sense simply because the Japanese rarity versus this rarity, you can't even compare the two. Back-to-back -back months on this set, sitting at $50. We know that full art trainers have the opportunity to really pull the weight in these early sets uh, when a new series comes out. So I think this Miriam in the long run is going to do really well. Not pulling the trigger quite yet. I'm going to do exactly what I did with Crown Zenith. I'm going to give it a couple months to flush out. I'm going to see when this thing starts to flatten out and then we'll go. But I guarantee you this is going to be in my collection. Beautiful card, beautiful piece of artwork. I think this is just an absolute stunner. All right, now we're at the number one and I hate to end on a bad note. And this isn't a bad note, but this is just me being realistic, and this is me being open and honest with you all, which you know I always am, okay? So this Moonbrion absolutely scares the living tar out of me, and here's why. Like, I get it, Evolving Skies is exciting. Everybody's looking for the next team up set. Evolving Skies is definitely gonna be the big set out of Sword and Shield, but this card's going for like $650 on the secondary market. Now, this is an ultra modern card. They could reprint this tomorrow if they wanted to. I don't think they will, but they could go ahead and reprint Evolving Skies. There's already 6,800 PSA 10s out there. Now, what I wanted to call out is the disparity between the PSA 10 count and the PSA 9 count. I mean, the PSA 10 is 4 or 5x the PSA 9 count. Now, what does that tell me? That means there's a lot of sealed evolving skies out there. A lot of people are going to be cracking it over time. These cards just naturally seem to be coming in in PSA 10 condition. That PSA 10 number, it could 2x. It's not going to 3x or anything, but it could get to 10, 11, 12,000. And I think that's going to put a lot of downward pressure on the price. I'm not knocking this card. If you have it, if you love it, if you're buying it, I'm all about that life. You do you, you do what makes you happy. But for me, I told you I was scared to spend $300 on the Giratina, you know, ultra modern card. I am terrified to spend $630 on this. I will tell you right now, if I were to pull this from an Evolving Skies pack tomorrow, I would have it graded and I would sell it and I would diversify that money out. That's just me. That's just one man's opinion. I am known to be wrong just as much as I'm known to be right. Um, but it's a beautiful piece of artwork. It's an awesome card from an awesome set. You can do a lot worse than having this in your collection. And if you do, not gonna lie, I'm low-key jealous because I mean, who doesn't want a $650 Pokemon card in their collection? All right, everybody, you guys know how much I love doing this video. I hope you find value in the content. If you made it all the way to the end and you haven't hit the subscriber button yet, what are you doing? Hit that subscriber button. We do fun stuff like this all the time. Hey, listen, if you liked what you saw, give us a thumbs up. Questions or comments, drop them down below. I love responding to them. Hey, I hope you guys have an epic rest of your weekend and I will be talking to you on Sunday. Thanks everybody. Bye.